Yes, what is up, everybody? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 214. We're getting up there. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen, it's got two names. It's got, uh, there we go, Ethan Newberry, which is myself, and then Kimberly Tashima Newberry, my wife, who is normally here by my side uh, every Monday, fielding questions from the live chat room. She's actually in the other room with our poor pup who had uh, cancer removed from his jaw on Friday. Uh, he's doing well, but he's requiring a lot of hands-on TLC. So she's in the other room taking care of our dog, Gus. Uh, but she is watching the live show. And if you have questions throughout the live show for our guest tonight, she will be fielding those to me here on the computer itself. Big show. we got the Coconino Cowboys on tonight. And I'm not not just one, not two. We've got five, pretty much all of them. Uh, I'm really excited about tonight's show. I don't want to waste any time here in the intro. Sit back, relax, everyone. I'm very excited about tonight's show. Ginger Runner Live episode number 214 begins now. Yes, what is up, everyone? Happy Monday. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedules to spend a little bit of it with us uh, on tonight's show. Big episode, so we can't really waste any time. Um, we have the Coco Nino Cowboys on tonight's show, five of them. Uh, we've got Eric Sensman, Jim Walmsley, Jared Hazen, Cody Reed, Tim Frericks. This is a big one. Um, it might get chaotic. A part of me is like, tonight's show is going to get a little chaotic, and I'm excited about that because these guys are some of the fastest on earth. Uh, they are, I mean, I'm guessing they're in taper for the Western States 100, which is coming up in a matter of days. We're going to talk to them all about what they've been doing, training, how they got into the race, what their uh, expectations are at the event, uh, the competition, all that good stuff. So we'll say hi to these guys here in just a second. Before we do, of course, uh, we have a lot of people to thank our Patreon supporters, first and foremost. Um, we are able to do this show week after week, month after month, because of our Patreon supporters at all levels. Three individuals in particular are at that top tier helping us uh, do this show live um, week after week. And those individuals, Chris Lee. Chris Lee lives in Hong Kong, and he organizes a group there called Trailblazers, showcasing all of the incredible trails that Hong Kong has to offer. Uh, they do really great community outreach as well. He raised $10,000 recently by doing a screening of Where Dreams Go to Die, uh, raising money for a local charity. He's an incredible dude and watches the show live. Big shout out to Chris. Rick Bjarnison and his team at CheekyMonkeyMedia.ca. They're a web design company. They're redoing the GingerRunner.com website. He himself is an ultra runner training for Sinister 7 and the Fat Dog 120, two baller races up in Canada. So he's in the midst of training for those right now. So big shout out to Rick and his team. And finally, Brian Sands, who I believe is still on vacation, but Brian has been a longtime supporter of the show, ran his first marathon in October, uh, lost over 100 pounds in his journey to get there, and is now currently training for his first 50K. He's going to be an ultra runner this year. Uh, his race is coming up very soon. It's awesome to have him on board. Uh, he's an inspiration, as are all of our Patreon supporters, but it's great to have them support the show. Uh, so... Let's get into this thing. I want to just make sure I have all these guys ready to go. Okay. Our guests tonight have shredded every race that they've entered this year. Uh, they are a brotherhood of uh, cowboys, ultra runners, uh, speedsters, currently all residing in the Flagstaff, Flagstaff area in Arizona. Uh, they are coming to us live from Flagstaff. Without further ado... The Coconino Cowboys. Yeah. You guys deserve. Yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause. You guys deserve it. Well done. <laughs> uh, so from my left, uh, we have Tim Frericks. How are you, Tim? Doing well. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate you uh, being able to make it. Next to him, Jared Hazen. Jared, how are you? Doing great. How are you? Good. This is your first time on the show as well, yeah? It's nice to have you guys. Eric Sensman. Hello. The actual cowboy hat on display. Yeah, I'm the only one that's in uh, proper uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Next to him, Cody Reed. How are you, Cody? Doing great. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Jim Walmsley. Yeah. So, Jim, you've been on the show before. Did you guys? Did you give these guys a prep talk as to uh, 
how to prepare? Because I, I imagine there's so much preparation involved. Uh, the, the learning curve is going to be steep tonight. So we're going to see how to handle the fire. <laughs> Uh, well, let's get this out of the way first. You guys are coming to us from Flagstaff, um, but a good friend of the show, uh, Chris Thornley and Squirrels Nut Butter, they they do great stuff. You're coming to us from Squirrels Nut Butter headquarters, yeah? We are indeed. Yeah, squirrel right behind us. <laughs> tell we're us, you're all involved with them. So tell us a little bit about your involvement with them. Should I take this one? Yeah, yeah, I take this is yours. I guess I'm, I'm well, Jim started, uh, started it all by getting to know Chris a couple years ago. But I recently became employed by Chris. Um, so thanks to Chris, I get to pay rent and eat food and, you know, drink beer. Uh, otherwise, I'd probably be homeless. Thanks, Chris. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we're, so it's nice. Uh, recently, we did a collaboration with him. He, he wanted to help support us with, uh, with us all getting into Western states. Um, so we came out with a, a special edition stick with Squirrels Nut Butter. So that's been cool. Um, but yeah, we're all uh, ambassadors as well, um, so we all uh, try to support the brand as much as we can. So, I'm like, I've been excited about this for the last couple of days because Eric and I have been talking about getting the whole crew on uh, for a couple of days now. Uh, it's just nice to have you guys all on the show. Have you ever done uh, another podcast or another show where you've answered questions as a group before, or is this kind of the first time? I know you guys hang out all the time, but is this the first time you guys are doing it in this capacity? I think we, we tried to do something live once before Lake Sonoma, and it really just didn't turn out it, the way it, we it, wanted. We, we got some of the kinks out of the way for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, but more or less, the, sh the short answer is this is our first podcast or interview formally as a group. Yeah. See, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's start at the beginning then. I want to know a bit about the Coconina Cowboys, kind of how you guys came together. Uh, obviously, you're all dominant in the sport. Um, but were you friends beforehand? Was it just two of you like, Hey man, we need to start this crew or, or how did it evolve? Uh, we can start down the line or whoever wants to pick up from, from there at the beginning. Yeah. So, um, Jim and I had actually run in, uh, high school together. It was like 11 years ago now. Um, so I knew him from the high school, Arizona track and field and cross country scene and, um, was taking a little bit of a break from competitive running after college. And uh, then found out that this this crazy fast uh, uh, ultra runner had moved to town, and his name was Jim Walmsley. And it's like, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, I I started just doing long runs in the canyon to get away from work, and uh, ended up linking up with Jim out in the Grand Canyon a few times. And um, yeah, I mean, from there it just kind of took off. We uh, I feel like Jim and I uh, put in some really great runs together, and then. Knew I had a friend that, that I ran with at NAU, Cody Reed, um, that uh, would love to do this stuff and invited him out. And the three of us really just started running in the canyon uh, like weekly, every every uh, every few days. And weekly. Um, yeah. <laughs> kind of blossomed into what you see here. Uh, is there a prereq to become a, a Coconino Cowboy? Because obviously Eric and Jared had to have joined on at some point as well to the three of you. So is there like an audition process? <laughs> Jim, do you want to answer this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll just repeat it. Uh, so pretty much Eric got here by blind luck. And then we recruited Jared from Pennsylvania to get back into ultra running after trying to run in college for a little bit. Um, actually, Eric probably took the most uh, kind of recruiting or badgering to kind of get him out here and I don't think we necessarily expected it but all of a sudden it was like hey guys I'm moving to flag like uh, I want to come out and train with you guys and it was just like all right and that probably the main thing more than anything is just we want guys to train with we want guys to pick up the phone go for a cool run with and more or less it turns into this is our group of friends we run together and Basically, that defines kind of a Coconino cowboy in heart. But at the same time, we have a much greater community at this point. And anyone who wants to carry that spirit wherever they live, like, uh, it's all about kind of challenging the status quo and getting the most out of yourself. I mean, that's one thing that I, uh, Jim, knowing you for a while now, I, I feel like that's something that has been one of your banners, which is, which is you put it out there, right? You, you say 
uh, your goal and you're not afraid to say it um, and you go for it. And I feel like that's also something we saw a lot this year in all of your qualifying races. And I, I think it's really cool and it's bold. You're not seeing a lot of that in ultra of like calling your home runs, right? Um, I, I think it's unique and I think it's fun. I want to remind everyone that, of course, we are live. So if you have questions for any of the Coconina Cowboys or all of them as a whole, drop them into the chat room. Uh, Kim is in the other room behind that door, which you cannot see. And she's been messaging me uh, for the last few minutes with some questions already from the chat room. For example, Deb asks for the Cowboys. They uh, were pretty aggressive putting out there how they were going to qualify for Western States 100, as we just talked about. Uh, I wonder if they have bets on what order they think they will finish amongst themselves. So I figured this was going to come up at some point, but you're all running Western States in, I don't know, what is it, 12 days? Uh, Do you guys have predictions as to order or is there a secret order in your head that you're like, "Ah, I'm going to win any of that kind of stuff? Let's, Let's go down the line. Tim, let's start with you. Um, I, I mean, I, I think all of us want to take a crack at, uh, going for the win or going for a podium. Um, and I think like, you know, with the way ultra running goes, it's like, it, it can be anyone's day sometimes. Um, obviously Jim has the most experience or Jim and Jared have the most experience here and, um, and Jim's done some incredible things on the course. So I think he's, you know, he's obviously the favorite, but I think we all want to try and be up there with him and, and pushing the pace and, sure. uh, sure. Yeah. Well, after that comment, I think Tim's going to drop out of the flat. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. I might not even get there. I mean, I've run 200 miles on the course. Long <laughs> speed has, I don't know, 120 plus, you know, 68. So that's like 171. So I got him by 29 miles. Having said that, I'm picking myself for the win. <laughs> I'll go with Eric for, for uh, second. We'll give Jim third, and, and Cody, I'm sorry that you're going to have to take fourth. But at least you finished. Yeah. Uh, Eric? I, yeah, I did, my, my thing all along is just you don't want to be the fifth cowboy. So you really got to gotta avoid that. Um, I also think I'm, I'm more concerned with uh, whether or not I'm first or fifth at mile 80 and not mile 20. So... Um, I don't know. If the race ended at 20, I'd give it to Jim, but we got to go the whole way. What about you, Cody? Uh, when I finish, it'll be my first 100 finish, uh, and that's like what I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and I think that if I just run like a smart race, that I'll place well and probably win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will win. Uh, Jim, what about you? What do you you think? Yeah, I mean, I think the one guarantee for me is I'm definitely going to put my best foot forward and give it like everything I have out there. I think uh, just like the last two years, I'm really hoping to try to win this race. But also things haven't gone that way uh, the last two years. So. Probably um, just kind of see what happens. I think it's going to be fun to hear everybody's stories at the end of the day. Um, yeah, it'd be really awesome if we could all make it to Auburn, um, as that's no small feat. And I guess that's for order. Um, I'll take myself first. Uh, I'll take Tank second, Tim third. Holy shit, Jim. And uh, I, I'll leave the, the oh other one. God. I'm not going to pick the last one. Wow. <laughs> You're going to make him duke it out. Biggest thing is I, we want five guys to offer. That's, that's yeah. the main goal that we can all can agree on. Yeah. The rest is just a bunch of badgering to see. <laughs> yeah. it's, well, really it's awesome, and it's obvious that you guys are good friends. And I can imagine there's a certain amount of razzing that goes on between you guys on a regular basis. So I'm I'm really curious. You're one of the... You're not the only run crew out there, but you're certainly one of the uh, most well-known groups of elite men who work together uh, often to win races or podium races and that sort of thing. How big of a role do you think this teamwork or this team element that you guys have trained so hard to create, how much do you think this will play a role in Western States in a couple of days? Tim again? Yeah, let's start with, yeah, we'll just kind of go through. Let's start with Tim. 
I, mean, I think the biggest thing that's kind of already played a role is kind of the teamwork we've been able to uh, rely on has gotten us all to the line. Um, I think on race day, it's like, you know, in these long races, it's kind of everyone has to do what works best for them. So teamwork is uh, kind of ambiguous. But, um, but yeah, I think being able to call up one of five guys or all five and be able to get out for a training run has been a huge huge push to being consistent and being held accountable in training. And I think that's why we were able to all qualify. I think that was important for making it to the Squaw Valley. Sweet. Yeah. Jared, yeah, Jared, I'm curious about your kind of uh, aspect with the team and, and how it helps. Yeah, so I agree with Tim. I mean, getting out for training runs with these guys is great. But, uh, you know, just beyond just the five of us, there's a much bigger, uh, like, support like community behind us, you know, and so we're going to have a big crew of guys and, and girls out there uh, cheering us on, supporting us, and I think that makes a big difference on race day, you know, when things get tough, it becomes, you know, you want to do it for them a little bit, um, whereas if you're there all alone, it's a little easier to, to have a phone job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric, uh, go ahead. On to me. Yeah, well, I think, I, I don't know that you can... I, I don't know that you can quantify it. I'd like to quantify like what you know teamwork can do for you. Or at least like, four hours. <laughs> yeah, you'll be four hours faster if you uh, if you've been training with the team. Yeah, I, I I don't know how to quantify it, but I think uh, the the magic exists. Um, like if you had told me a year ago that you know I could finish fourth at Lake Sonoma and, and run the time that I did and get into Western States, I, I'm not sure that. I'm not sure I would have believed it. Um, so I, I think the last year has um, changed things a lot for me, being being in this community and running with these guys. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that continues to be the case uh, as we go forward. And, and hopefully that's the case at Western States. But yeah, I, I think there's a an added element and um, extra incentive to to run well when it's more it's about more than just you. So I think that's sure. kind of where the magic is. Uh, for Cody and Jim, I'm actually curious about this. So, Cody, it's your first 100. Obviously, uh, you, you want to get it done more than anything. Um, I know that they uh, they allow pacers. What's the pacer situation? Since you guys have all gotten into the race, are you picking a pacer from outside of uh, the Coconino? Or are you going to try to keep up with someone else and work together? What, what's your goal here? Ideally... I would have had one of my best friends pace me, but <laughs> they're all racing. So Damn it! It was really, I know, it was really hard. Like, think of somebody who would pace me. Um, but I've been talking with two of my friends who might might not come out. Um, either way, um, uh, I think it'll be it'd be fine to have a pacer or not. And Jim, you've had, I mean, you've had pacers in the past, but also you've outrun all of your pacers in the past. Uh, are you planning on doing anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> they were dragging me into the river last year. Um, as far as pacers, I think uh, I, I'm not really – I haven't decided on a pacer yet. Um, I will say these aren't my only four friends in the world, so I do have other running friends. <laughs> but more than anything, it goes to kind of maybe what I was going to say about the last question is that um, – just in general, having the guys that I run with the most, having other guys that I rely on for pacing in my day-to-day -day runs, um, having that within the race, I think is just going to be uh, extremely important to all of our successes. We can call bullshit on other people's moves if we all kind of look at each other and just go, yeah, no one's sticking that. Um, or we can go like, guys, this is really slow, right? Like We, we can kind of make a group decision that way and um, that, that's really comforting knowing that you have people that you can trust that need to read the race the same way I do. And we can make kind of a group open discussion kind of about that. And you know what, I'm probably not going to have that conversation with, uh, Jeff Browning or Francois Dain or Mark Hammond. Like those guys are our competitors and, um, I'd rather see one of my buddies finish in the podium than one of those guys. Like, not that they're not great people, but um, I like these guys. And 
and stuff. So it's true for everyone else besides those three. He wasn't just single. Yeah, we're right. not letting anyone else know, <laughs> including everyone else. <laughs> I think it's. I mean, I think that's an interesting dynamic. So you, in a, in a way, that's a, that's a bit of a benefit having you guys all race at a certain caliber. You have each other's backs to lean on, but also the communication. Like you kind of brought it up there. I've can't tell you how many guests I've had on the show who are maybe Western state specific guests who talk about, you know, like, are you going to talk to someone else about your plan? Or if someone goes out X fast, are you going to try to keep up with them? Or what's your, what's your race day plan? And often the answer is, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of keep it to myself or do my own thing and just kind of feel it out. But it seems like you guys have the ability to, to work with each other, communicate with each other. Do you think that gives you a leg up? I mean, it seems like it would. Do you think do you think it's going to be helpful come come the race day? Yeah, definitely. I think that's what I was kind of aiming at. Of like for us, it's an obvious leg up. I think especially for me and maybe Eric and Tim, uh, since we're the ones who haven't uh, finished a hundred mile race yet, uh, we can you know talk with Jared and Jim that are around us at the time and you know see like what we need to do. Um, Sweet. Yeah. We have the experience. Yeah, having those two to, to key off of just as far as like, just like the little pieces of advice um, that you might not take into consideration. So I, just want, I just want to pause this for a minute. Why are we keying off Jim? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because he's made a 100-mile race. Well, I, 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 can also, I can also I can also say it's like, it's like race day prep, though, too. Like, we bounce everything off of, yeah. like, from nutrition. I'm like, what do you guys do nutrition-wise? Like, and then we can have a laugh at someone's if it's really different of like you're kidding, right? <laughs> um, but for the most part, uh, we can also throw open questions out to each other like that where not everyone in the sport has a perfect mentor like that. Um, so yeah. we, we kind of help each other out and that goes to like how all of us got into the races and helping each other out just to be here. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I want to make sure that people in the live chat room know we are getting your questions. Kim's already pulled a couple, uh, couple aside here for us. So let's get to some of these live questions. Uh, Robert asks, a uh, question for the group. How do you plan to tackle the Western States 100 as a group? And how much cappuccino do you guys plan to drink during the race? I think we kind of answered the first one a little bit. But cappuccino, is there going to be a lot of caffeine uh, jumping around between the Coconino Cowboys? At Forest Hill, one of our friends is going to be there, and I'm going to have him with cappuccino ready for me. <laughs> Are you actually going to drink a cappuccino? I will, I will drink it if he has it ready for me. Wow. Cody's down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> I stay away from coffee of all sorts, race day, and then uh, I drink my coffee black. <laughs> I, I love I, it. I actually think I'm not going to take caffeine the first half of the race. On a serious, yeah. If you wanted to turn this question serious. Um, <laughs> uh, I do think I'm going to wait until the second half of the race to take caffeine. Um, I, it can be tough to do that for you know, 15 plus hours. I, I think it uh, loses its effects. So There's a, um, a question here that I, I'm curious about the answer to. Uh, this comes from Nathan Fenton. Has there been any backlash against your brash approach? He says, I love it, by the way. But I'm curious about this as well. You guys aren't, I wouldn't say it's brash as much as it's uh, its good marketing. Uh, you guys have done a great job of branding yourselves, not only as individual racers who are sponsored athletes, but also as a team of friends who do really big things. So I'm curious, has there been any backlash or speaking of cappuccino, the cappuccino cowboys, like, is that you or is that other people? Like how how does how does yeah, it all come together? Situation with some bitter people out there. Their coffee's not quite roasted right. <laughs> but um, for the most part, like the majority of it, of all the positivity that we get, completely outweighs any backlash that comes along. Every like one out of a thousand, like it's really not a big deal. And those are the things we just can't pay attention to because we have our own goals that we're going to focus on and you know what it's this is the way we like doing it we have fun and at the end of the day like say everything falls apart like we're a group of friends that are going to have a beer 30 years from now and have a really good chuckle about it so um we, we've had overwhelming positive uh support with all of it so 
um, we feel like we're doing something right. I, I was asked something similar on a, on a podcast recently, and it was specific to Jim, and they were like, oh, Jim's, Jim's got haters, like, what's up with that? <laughs> Uh, and my response, and this is true now, I think for us as a group, it's like, if you have haters, you kind of made it, you know, like if people are actually hating on you, I think that's a good sign just because like, it's a, it's sort of just a numbers game. Like, uh, if, if 10,000 people care about you, like at least one's going to hate you for sure. Um, so I think that just means, uh, people are noticing you, um, if, if people are hating on you. <laughs> so, um. I guess to some to some degree that's a good thing. Well, I mean, I can absolutely attest to that. I'm not breaking any records. I'm not winning any races, and I have my fair share of haters. I think it's it's just something that comes with the territory, no matter what you're doing, whether you're winning races or you're losing the races. It, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's, it's going to happen. And I agree. I think it's I don't know. I think it helps make you stronger, makes you faster. In your guys' case, uh, this question comes to us from Nathaniel. Do you guys worry about your friendly competitiveness leading you all to push too hard too early and risk possibly burning out? Now, Jim, I know you have experience at States in multiple capacities. Uh, Jared, same thing. So you guys are going into this race with a bit of experience and, and knowing the course and knowing the, the elements and stuff. So you know how to pace yourself for it. For the rest of the guys, is are you worried about going out too hard, pushing too early, any of that kind of stuff? Tim, we'll start with you and we kind of work our way down. I also want to hear from Jared and Jim, too. Yeah, I think it's definitely a consideration. I mean, not having run 100 mile and and the 100K that I've run that I think went decent was, <laughs> was a bit of a tough day. So, like, for me personally, it's just – it's just a matter and I get, you know, I'm going to be constantly reminding myself not to get wrapped up in things too early because I think what feels easy at mile 50 is going to soon feel feel pretty tough. But again, I mean, that's where I'm going to lean on these guys. And, you know, it's like if I'm running with Jared or Jim, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm hurt pretty bad, man. Like, is this, you know, do you think it's too far? And, um, yeah, I, I think uh, just erring on the side of caution while still, you know, putting myself out there is how I want to approach it. Nice. Jared? Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to feed Tim a bunch of lies when we're out there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, I think experience goes a long way with the hundred. Um, just, you can't, you know what to expect, you know, when mostly I think the biggest piece of advice I can give is like, you know, like when it hurts really bad, you know, that like, that's just the way it is, you know, um, it might get better. It might not. Um, uh, you just kind of have to keep going forward. And, um, and just having splits that I think in 2015 I ran a pretty competitive race. And so knowing kind of my fitness then, my fitness now, and being able to, to look at splits um, will be pretty helpful this year. Hmm. Eric, what about you, man? Ethan, I just realized we're wearing the same shirt in different colors. So <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty sweet. I have to represent for you guys. I pre we appreciate that. Um, I mean, I think uh, it – you know, if it's your first time running 100 miles, it is in my case. If you can run 100 miles like a 10-year ultra veteran, I, you know, I think that is no different than someone who's run a someone who's run a bunch of hundreds. Um, in my case, I've been running ultra since 2011, uh, and like I sucked for a long time, and and now I like have kind of figured it out the last year or so. So I don't I don't approach it and think like, oh, I'm not in a good position because it's my first one. I, I actually think I have a lot of experience. Um, so I, I'm not uh, too concerned, like, coming in uh, to my first 100, I think. Um, yeah, I think I've got it figured out en enough to to run it like a veteran, hopefully. So Nice. Cody, I'm curious. Yeah, what, what do you think in that, in that realm? Uh, just, like, this is going to be, like, trial run. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. The farthest I've run is, like, 70 miles. And, like, this... Uh, I need to be feeling like decent still at 70 miles, I think, from what I've heard and who I've talked to. Uh, and I've never been able to do that before. Um, so I just need to hold myself back and not go out too fast. Like, need to let these guys do whatever they want to do, um, which I have a feeling is going to be faster than me. But I'll get them in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Jim, I'm like, let's talk, actually, I want to talk a little bit about 
strategy with you. You don't have to give away your your Jim Walmsley strategy or any of that kind of thing. But again, you've you've run this race a couple of times. You've been in first place both of those times for at least a portion of the event. Uh, do you have any strategies going into this year's event that will one get you the finish, but maybe get you the finish you've always wanted? Do you have any uh, strategies going into this year? Well, the finish I always wanted probably has to do a lot more with weather than probably like the weather of the day of the race. Um, yeah, I'm he's just learning. He's adapting. Yeah, some years aren't quite uh, appropriate for course records, but um, <laughs> most days are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not too worried. I think this year's. One of the goals I have for this year in general, um, which it's going to be true for Western States and true for UTMB, for me is just trust trust my judgment on the pace. Um, don't get caught up in if someone's going faster, someone's going slower. Run what I feel is comfortable and have confidence in that decision. And it's all about just keeping, just like, believing in it. Go, go believe it and... I, I mean, I'm not worried about failing again. It's whatever. Uh, you're going to have lots of those throughout a career, and you're going to have lots of the wins at the top of the biggest stages to balance that all out. And it's it's all a fun process and a journey. Um, so, yeah, it'll be all right. Well, I... I... I also commend you too, Jim. It's it's it seems like you've come a long ways in the last couple of years. We've had you on the show a couple of times, and uh, it's, it's just been fun to follow. It, it's cool to see you approach this year in the same way, but I guess with a bit more maturity. Um, we have a great question here from Deb, uh, and this because of Jim's answer right there. I was curious about this as well. But training plans. Many of you aren't coached. I believe are any of you coached at this point? Zero. Zero coaches, so you guys work together. Do you stick with similar training plans? Uh, do you do your own thing? What if one person's body isn't feeling great one day? How do you adapt? So let's talk about training plans. Can I break this down? Break it down. Let me, let break me it down. Break, let me just break this down into like, there's three groups. There's three groups here, this? more or less. Okay. No, everyone can go. I'm just going to give you an overview. You've got the crazy guys, and that's Jared and Jim. And they're crazy because they just they think that they can they should just run as much as possible, and then that amounts to like 150 plus miles a week, right. which I think is crazy. And then you have like the more rational guys, and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Tim and I in that category, um, where it's, it's consistent. <laughs> it's consistent. It's, Poor it's, Cody. It's, it's at a reasonable level. It's consistent. You know, it's it's more like uh, bread and butter, what you'd see everywhere. And then I think, I think what's coming next. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think I put Cody in the category of outlier, where he he bounces between groups. I mean, sometimes he's up there running crazy miles. Sometimes he's yeah. you know down doing something more moderate. So that's how that's how I look at it. But yeah, I mean, uh, right now for me, it's like it's just a matter of like the amount of the number of hours in a week I'm, I'm balancing training with 36 to 40 hours a week in in the hospital right now um and that for me honestly i think in the last year has been um a really good like limiter for me where like 110 is kind of like my my like max right now and and it's kind of kept me from overtraining i think but um but yeah i mean to echo what eric said i think him and i kind of fall in the middle um middle of the spectrum and um, I feel like in the last year I've found kind of a good balance. It's been working for me. And, um, as always, we're always bouncing ideas off each other just because we don't train identically to each other. doesn't mean like we don't ask each other for each other's input and what we think is smart for a given athlete and for ourselves. So Jared, has your training changed over the years? I mean, I know that you've, uh, you've run hundreds before that sort of thing. Are you pushing now harder than you ever have before or are you like pulling back because you know your body can handle a certain amount? What's your strategy now? Uh, Eric thinks it's funny. Um, yeah, I, I think I've always been a little out there with my, my training methods and um, just like kind of volume that I do. And a lot of it's just I really love to train. Um, you know, I love going out and being on the trails and spending four hours a day on the trail is, you know, my ideal day. But 
you know, that leads to taking a few dingers every now and again. <laughs> um, but so basically, I think the progression of my training has went from very high volume at a super low intensity to a slightly less volume, but still pretty high at a higher intensity. Is kind of what I'm finding is like the older I get, especially in just these years of between like 18 and now 23, you know, a lot changes. Um, and I just feel a lot stronger now um, and I'm able to really hit runs harder and, and whatnot. But um, I couldn't really go up in volume from where I was. <laughs> <laughs> Because he was already at the top. Yeah, do you know how much he runs? This kid, he was running 200 mile weeks at like age 18. There's always room to run more. You guys realize this, right? <laughs> Don't tell him that. I tell him these guys that every week. There's always room for more. You should be spending at least six to eight hours a day. If this is a full time job, then treat it like a full time job. I'm going to. I'm telling you right now, Jared, you should be doing 250 to 300 mile weeks. Swear to God. Hey, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Ethan, this is poison. Hard. Ethan, do you? Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Running is only half the training. Recovery is the other half. I take naps like a bomb. Only <laughs> real, only professionals say that. Like, come on. Come on. <laughs> only people that know what they're doing. I run 250. Look at this body. This is a 250 mile a week body right here, guys. Perfect for physique. Everyone yeah. knows that. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm actually really curious about what you think are going to be the biggest challenges this year. Last year, there was you know high alpine snow, stuff like that, that maybe influenced some runners' uh, ability to run fast early on. What do you think the challenges are going to be this year? Uh, it seems like there's not going to be a lot of snow. Water might be fine. Uh, what about personally and course-wise? Let's start with uh, Jim. Let's start at the other end and go from Jim on down. Um, being the only one that actually ran last year, uh, I can compare it. But so I mean, I don't think there's going to be the snow for starters. Um, from what I've heard, maybe the water levels on the creek crossings could be a bit lower. So you might have to have a good ear, a good eye to find the the, the muddy puddle to go lie in at the right time. Um, other than that, I mean, the forecast hasn't really, even if it has come out. It's not predictable yet, so um, a lot of it's going to be a couple days before. And I think even last year, the, the temperatures started rising. Like It ended up being like five degrees warmer than what they said just five days earlier. So um, you, you can't really predict that at this point in time, and we're still only 12 days out. But um, other things for what's going to be hard... Um, for me personally, a big goal of mine, I've been working with Cliff a lot on different ways I can try to keep my stomach more settled for longer times with high intensity and the heat like that. So I'm looking forward to trying to see uh, how my nutrition plan goes. Sweet. Cody. So, so Western States, like the major problem every year for a lot of runners is always the heat. Um, so that's going to be it. Like one of the main things that I'm focused on, uh, like trying to stay cool in the river, make sure I have enough ice and and uh, like whatever I need to stay cool. Um, and another thing for me personally, like eating later in a race uh, is a problem. So if I do get a pacer, I think it'll help me in that regard, just because they can tell me like every 20, 30 minutes, like you need to eat, and I'll probably argue with them and I just need to have them like shove it in my mouth if need be. <laughs> like... <laughs> Eric? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think uh, the, the people overanalyze uh, running ultras. Um, I think you need to have your ducks in a row. Like you need to have everything figured out ahead of time, but like what's going to be hard about running an ultra? Ultras are really hard, and you're going to get to a point where you're like, this sucks, this is stupid, what, what am I doing, I should just stop, and then you're going to have to step up and uh, be uncomfortable for a long time. So like, I think the question is, who can do that the best? Um, so yeah, that, that's going to be the, the tough part. Jared? Yeah, I think one thing I've learned with 100 miles is you never really know what the challenges are going to be until that day. Sure. Um, sure. 
And so it's really, really important that you make good decisions on the fly. And because um, there's, you know, there will be very, you know, there'll just be a lot of times throughout the day where you need to make a decision. And if you make the wrong one, your race can be over. Tim? It's kind of piggyback on that. I mean, that's, <laughs> I think everything noteworthy has been said already. But yeah, <laughs> I think just for me, like in any ultra, it's just, um, just, being able to kind of handle the curveballs and not get too <laughs> taken off guard. Um, like if your crew is not there or, um, you know, there's less water out on the course to jump in than you thought there would be. And just, um, yeah, I mean, not letting little things become big things. It's been big for me in the past, keeping your feet dry and uh, making sure you're not chafing. So it's a little bit Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, But yeah, I got the, <laughs> um, yeah, the, those are my, my big two things. And uh, I'm actually really curious. You guys train a lot in the canyon. Obviously, you mentioned it uh, numerous times during the show. Your proximity to the canyon, you're close. Um, how important do you think it is training in something so epic that gets hot? It can be dangerous for people who maybe aren't trained properly. How important do you think it has been to your training? Uh, I You laugh. I, I know people have died. Uh, I'm curious if you guys know if that will help your training or do you use it specifically to help train for states or is it an all year thing for you guys let's talk about that yeah i, I think the canyon more than anything else has just been like our kind of like our secret weapon i think you uh if you can handle high temperature days down there um you can handle a lot of things most things um and like the canyon's perfect because it gets so hot at the bottom you know between 100 and 110 in the summer uh, but there is water, so you do get a, a really good practice session of managing heat well. And um, I, I think it's just a psychological thing. It's like just kind of tricking yourself into thinking that 105 degrees feels cool. goes a long way for races <laughs> like states. I, I would say, too, just as far as the safety thing, we do stick to the main corridors for like 90, yeah. 95 percent of the runs we do in the canyon because there is water. Um, with that said, like most of the bad accidents probably happen doing more epic journeys on some of the lesser known trails. And if you're going to do that, you need to bring a filter and you need to have a, a really solid game plan. Uh, we can get away with risking hard training days in the canyon because we do stick to usually in groups and then as well as, uh, water routes. Yeah. You're always within six miles of water if you stick to the main routes but off the corridor trails in the summer is like pretty much just a a, a hard no like Asking you just yeah, yeah. I, and, and like you said ethan I, I you hear the stories of people who have passed away and it's it's sad and i think you need to really respect the canyon in that regard i think that's a good advice there and and just good knowledge to help spread is that you guys aren't necessarily doing these huge epic adventures solo let alone off some of the main quarters where you're able to get water within five six miles that's good to note uh because i imagine there's there's a certain element of people out there who are like oh my god these guys are just out there crushing a 50 mile trail running the canyon you know picking some random route off off like some trail or something like that so that's that's good to know good knowledge to spread um I want to remind our live audience that, uh, of course, if you have any residual questions, ask them now. We are going to move into the post show with these guys here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, so we're going to wrap up the main show and just go right into the post show. Uh, so if you have residual questions, ask them now if we can't get them here in the last little bit of the show. But then we'll definitely get them in the post show. But because we have a lot of first time uh, guests on tonight's show, uh, I believe actually, I think only Jim has been on the show before. So it's actually that's that's what is that? Eighty percent hasn't been on that's good math there you go good job me uh so since 80 percent of our guests have not been on the show we're going to do something we like to do with all first-time guests and we will include jim because it's been a while since jim's been on the show it's a little segment we call quickie question quiz it's very easy it's very quick uh i have a series of rapid fire questions and what we do is we just go down the line so tim we'll start with you Real quick, simple answers, and we'll just go down the line, and then we'll get to the next question and do uh, do that sort of thing. So give me the thumbs up when you guys are all ready, and we'll just rip on through the quickie question quiz. Look at that. Lots of thumbs. <laughs> uh, Tim, what was your very first race? Oh, like ultra race. Oh my God. Your choice. Uh, your first race, uh, a two-mile fun run in Cockman, Arizona. First ultra at Lake Sonoma, 2016. Jared? Uh, first race was... 
middle school cross country dual meet probably. Uh, first ultra is Baker, 50 mile in like middle of Pennsylvania. Eric? Uh, first race was an 8K my junior year of college, and first ultra was 2011 Minnesota Voyager 50. Cody? First race, uh, middle school cross country, like I think it was two miles. Um, first ultra was Miwok 100K in 2016. Jim? I did uh, eight, like a half mile in fourth grade on field day. And then uh, I didn't know where to count yet. Yeah, Jeez. yeah I, I count that. I mean, it's like, uh, that, was a good one. that was a good one for me. Uh, and then first ultra was Old Gate 50K out in Bozeman, Montana in 2014. Sweet. Favorite place to run? <laughs> the Grand Canyon, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Grand Canyon, the same one for Austin, too. I think the favorite place I've ever run is Grand Teton National Park up in Wyoming. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go with the canyon. Grand Canyon, San Juan's. Canyon makes cowboys. Nice. <laughs> so this might be interesting. Road or trails? Uh, trails. 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 Don't. Uh, trails. <laughs> <laughs> Bucket list race. Um, probably Hard Rock. Mm, yeah, hard rock for me as well. I want to say that, but I'll mix it up. I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna say hard rock. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> say, say hard rock. Hard rock. <laughs> Color five yeah, K. I've knocked out a lot of good bucket list race, um, but it's also added more bucket list of like revisiting races that haven't gone perfect but uh yeah hard rock's near and dear to my heart i'll be out there again for my fourth time fourth year in a row so i, I love hard rock favorite running movie <clears throat> yeah i don't know that i've seen many running movies. Fire, that's right. yeah, yeah sure it's some fire i haven't seen that's pretty good. yeah really good. i mean without limits is kind of cliche and, yeah. yeah but you I need a fan. Oh, it could be a film. Of course, film on. It could be a film too. Oh yeah. Oh, actually, the uh, the 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 short film about um about York High School cross country I thought was pretty sweet. That that inspired me to get out there and get after it in high school for sure. It kind of made me question my my own limits and what I can do. Oh, the long green line. <laughs> Jared, you said Forrest Gump. Yeah. Eric. Ethan, I think you saw this one coming. Um, anything you make is... <laughs> that is the correct answer. The <laughs> Eric is the only one with 100%. Uh, Cody, what about you? Uh, the Power of One movie based on a book. It's mostly boxing, but it run a little bit too. Sure. Jim? Yeah. I, I like clicking through YouTube videos. They kind of start blurring together. But um, if you put it out on YouTube, I've probably watched it. So uh, I... I like the free content on YouTube. <laughs> That's also a 100% answer. Uh, guilty pleasure TV show. So this is what I'm curious about. Do you guys even watch TV? If so, guilty pleasure TV show. Oh, Eric's big fan. Yeah, I, since this whole full-time nurse, culture runner gig is taken off, I don't watch a lot of TV anymore, but I, I really enjoyed Breaking Bad. It's probably the last TV series. But That's a good show. It's not a guilty yeah. pleasure. Yeah, like Kardashians. Well, I feel like a show is kind of a guilty pleasure because you're just sitting there and it kind of just feels unproductive. Oh, so I'm going to call it a guilty pleasure. Okay. Uh, oh, you're going through me off now. <laughs> I don't really have a guilty pleasure. I was going to tell you my favorite TV show. <laughs> What's your favorite TV show? Uh, <laughs> Californication. Oh, nice. Uh, I, I'm just going with favorite TV show. I think we went off track here. But Fine. Like, uh, I started watching Westworld recently, and it's amazing. It's incredible. Cody? I'm watching Westworld, so yeah. my other favorite show, uh, like, yeah, Bring Bad, Better Call Saul. I, I love good TV shows, especially when there's, like, four seasons out already or more, so I can just, like, you know, Binge take watch. a whole day, just yeah. phone it. Yeah. So Cody, Cody didn't have a job. <laughs> what about Jim? Uh, I don't watch TV. Um, I guess last TV show I watched was Game of Thrones. Last time that was out, and I haven't gone back. I'm waiting for the next one, really. 
what are you going to eat before the race and what is the first thing you're going to eat after western states oh man before race typically i'm boring oatmeal and coffee um uh, after like usually no it goes yeah like stuff doesn't go down easy pizza if i can uh before the race oatmeal and probably lara bars and after the race probably milkshake uh, even does beer count is yes food? yes that's my answer to both before and after. <laughs> it's its own food group that's right uh before the race i want to wake up really early have like a big meal and then a little bit before the race have a smaller meal like probably just oatmeal and fruit uh, uh after the race i don't know whatever i can handle i always crave smoothies after races like fruit smoothies yeah, good. that's usually like all I can stomach after a race. Yeah. Jim, a, a smoothie after the race actually does sound pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't even ran the race yet. But, <laughs> but like, I, I actually keep my race day breakfast basically the same for almost all my days because um, I just try to keep it consistent in general. Is uh, just granola with almond milk. So it's pretty boring, but it sets me up for. No stomach issues through the day, and uh, yeah, that's what I keep on race day. Nice. That is it, except for one last question, and this is, uh, I think a lot of our viewers want to know this, is what shoes are you going to be running in? Um, let's go down the line again, starting with Tim. What are you running in? I'll, uh, I'll be wearing the Evo Mufates. Uh They have Matrix Upper and Drain water really, really well. That, along with the Heat Running Dry Max Sock, just keep feet super dry. Sweet. I'll probably be wearing the Challenger Fours from Hoka. Ethan, do you have a second? I do. <laughs> the shoe right here. Hey, look at that. It's the North Face RKT. With the BOA system. BOA system. So there you go. Custom. Rob Car Trail shoe. Yeah. Yep. I uh, just reviewed them on the channel if anyone wants to go see it. <laughs> Cody? I... I'm wearing a new shoe by Under Armour uh, coming out next year. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it. I think you're supposed to say everything about it. With the hover phone. There it goes. Sweet. Uh, I'll be wearing the same shoe as Tim with the Mofati Evo. Um, it's a good shoe. I wear it at UTMB. Done a lot of training in it, and I'm really comfortable with it. Awesome. Gentlemen. You've all successfully passed the quickie question quiz. Congratulations. Yay. Uh, that is going to wrap up our main show with these gentlemen. We are going to move into the post show here. So if you are a Patreon supporter, we'll see you guys in just a couple of seconds with the Coconunia Cowboys. If you are not a Patreon supporter, consider it for as little as a buck a month. You support this channel and you also get to interact with our guests on a more intimate one-on-one -on -one level uh, after every show every Monday. So all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a buck. It's awesome and it's fun and we're going to be we're going to be having these guys here join us in just a second before we move into that post show of course i want to know gentlemen where can people find you online where can they follow you on social media reach out if they have residual questions uh let's start with tim where can they find you i'm on instagram is Ferks tim uh twitter is Ferks timothy uh i think on facebook search my name and it'll come up so yeah i i mean i'm receptive to any questions if you guys want to fire them send me on social media yeah, I'm on Instagram at Jared underscore Hazen, and then on Twitter, just Jared Hazen. Eric? Uh, sense, sense McGram on Instagram for me. And I recently had a tweet reach 300 likes. Thank you to everyone who liked that. Um, so on Twitter, it's Good Sense Runs. Was it about Beyonce? Is that what happened? No, what was it even about? I don't... Oh, I think I was talking about napping and, uh, and eating dessert. People really liked it. It wasn't keep trolling Tim, that's for sure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Cody? Uh, my Instagram is Cody Reed with four E's. Uh, Jesus Christ. Twitter as Reed Speed, also with four E's. Uh, and Facebook, just look me up as Cody Reed. I love what answering is? questions. Just drop it down in the DMs. The DMs. <laughs> And then I'm uh, WalmsleyRuns.com, and it's the same handle for all the social medias. I really appreciate it, gentlemen. The Coco Nino Cowboys have joined us on Ginger Runner Live in their entirety 
at least at this point who knows if more members will join or maybe there's more secret members we don't know about uh i am excited to have them on the show finally all together we are going to move into the post show with them um so consider that if you have not already cowboys still what was that we we're in search of some coconino cowgirls honestly (laughs) not like (laughs) <laughs> but just like other, you know, athletes, athletes. trail run athletes. Uh, I want to train. Is not a lot, man. That's a that's a good request there, Cody. Nice job. <laughs> uh, I think I think maybe you might get some uh, applications, but maybe that brings up a great question about love life. Maybe we'll ask that in the post show as well, because who knows? Do the Coco Nino Cowboys have significant Coco Nino cowgirls or cowboys? Who knows? <laughs> We'll find out in the post show, maybe. Um, so thank you, everyone, for watching tonight. Ginger Runner Live, episode number 214 with the Coconino Cowboys. Uh, I wish them all the biggest and bestest of luck at Western States. It is a, a notorious 100-mile race, obviously one of the most uh, well-known on planet Earth, the first. Um, I think it's going to be a barnstormer of a year. It's going to be fast. Both men and women's fields are stacked. I cannot wait to see what these guys do there and uh, can't wait to follow the female race as well. It's going to be amazing. So thank these gentlemen for being on the show. Go follow them on social media. Thank them for being a part of uh, tonight's episode. We will see those of you who are Patreon supporters in just a couple of seconds in the post show. Uh, And a big shout out to my wife who's taking care of our dog who is missing uh, part of his jaw. Uh, We've been having to hand feed him tonight. We had a great uh, support here in the chat room from the Negative Splits podcast. Really appreciate it, gentlemen, um, for giving that little extra clip there at the end. That's it. Get out there, guys. Train hard, race harder, and a part of the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week for more Ginger Runner Live, or we'll see you in the post show in just a second. Bye. Ginger Runner.